Kansas. This is Vin from Middle America. So I'm, I'm scrolling through, um, you know, CNN, all that good jazz last night, and I see that there's a shooting, and it says multiple people injured. And I said to myself, well, you know, that's an improvement from multiple people killed. Um, so I'm happy about that. Then I went around, went about my business, said a quick prayer, and went about my business. And then <coughs> today, I find out that 12, uh, 12 more of my countrymen have been killed. A week or two ago at the synagogue, there's 11. Now there's 12. And I'm afraid that we are getting, or if we haven't already completely been totally desensitized by this stuff. And it then devolves into uh, people, you know, hanging out in their various camps as far as um, gun control, not having good control. Apparently, the individual who I will not name um, did time in the Marine Corps. I think he got deployed to Afghanistan. Probably had PTSD. Had access to high-powered firearms. Same story over and over again. Um, at this point, it's kind of like, what possibly is the solution? My understanding of California is there are some pretty stringent gun laws in California, which did absolutely zero to stop this crime. Um, we have 320 plus million people in America and almost a gun for every American. I literally am at a loss. I don't know what the solution is. I know that we have a problem, but I don't know that there is a solution um, to this issue. Um, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. All I could say is um, take care of each other. I guess now, you know, I was at a fireside. Somebody asked me, are you nervous or whatever when you go outside or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, I go to the movies, I look at exits, I always take the power seat, I mean, call it what you want. Um, but those folks that went to the bar yesterday, or last night, were not thinking of uh, getting gunned down. And uh, I think this is where we are right now. Um, and it's not, you know, I love my country, I, I don't hate America, I, I obviously don't hate vets. Um, but we got a serious, serious issue here, and um, it really is at the point now where you've got to you've got to exercise some some vigilance when you go outside in public places. You just do. Um, but I, I I really don't know. I mean, I I haven't. If somebody can get me a um, a reference point to somebody who's actually come up with the solution for gun crime in America, I would like to know it. I really would. Because right now, <laughs> um, I just don't see what the solution is. You know, gun control would be great if I could wave a magic wand and de-gunify our country. I would, but like I said, California just—I'm pretty sure has some pretty stringent gun laws, and, and it did absolutely nothing for those people. Because if you are inclined to kill people you're probably not even thinking you're gonna make it out alive. I don't even know if this guy made it out alive. Um, but if you're inclined to be a murderer and kill a bunch of people in broad daylight and cold blood, it's not like you're gonna say, oh, well, <laughs> I can't, I'm not allowed to buy this gun because I have this whatever. Um, I'm, I'm, like I said, this is not an argument against gun control if I could wave a magic wand, sorry Second Amendment folks, if I could wave a magic wand and, and get, get rid of all the guns, I would. It's just, um, I just don't see the solution either way. So, anyway, <laughs> once again, we're stuck in a situation of saying thoughts and prayers. Um, I'm a Christian, I do believe in the power of prayer, and, and perhaps there is no legislative solution here, and perhaps we've got to take a long, hard look at ourselves as to why human life is, is so... Um, devalued and maybe maybe ideas have consequences um, look PTSD is a real thing 
But if you look at World War I and World War II, these guys were not coming home and gunning people down in public places. And there are some pretty traumatic elements of warfare in World War I and World War II, I think we can agree. I mean, Vietnam, same thing. Vietnam was pretty traumatic. On top of that, there was a lot of societal um, blowback on these vets. Um, where the society came after them. People were spitting on them. You didn't see shooting rampages. I mean, if if it was just the fact that these guys had PTSD because they'd come back from a war zone, Vietnam, the, 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 era, the Vietnam era should have seen bunches of mass shootings because these guys came back, not only did they have to deal with the tra trauma of Vietnam, but they had to deal with the probably even worse trauma of having a society judging them and being against them and literally spitting in their face. So why, why didn't we see a bunch of mass shootings then? I mean, these are real questions we gotta think about. This, this is a relatively new phenomenon in our country, and we gotta put our heads together and figure out what is going on. Um, so, anyway, uh, as for me, I think, <laughs> you know, call it what you want. I think we need, we, we need to really sit back and look at some of the social movements that have happened in the last 40 years and what they've told us about the value of human life um, and I think we need to figure that out maybe uh, legislating the problem isn't the issue with this particular situation anyway be diligent take care of each other if you do have a problem um, I'm gonna look to find some link in, links in the description for if you're struggling with PTSD or suicidal or homicidal thoughts there will be a link in the district in the dis, in the, the description that will um, channel you to judgment-free zones where you can you can go get help. Um, no judgments. Okay, guy, then out. Take care of yourself.